Hello and welcome to part two of my little dev container tutorial series. So in this part, it's now time to get our hands dirty. So we're gonna create our first container. Here the focus is on Docker and Docker Compose, how we can create a custom Docker image, which will contain all the tools, all the dependencies we need for our web development. I'll also show you how to use Docker Compose to spin up this container. And in addition to it, also a test container on which you can serve your homepage for testing. And then in the final part of this tutorial series, I show you how to turn this into a proper dev container with all the configurations. So let's get started. So as you've seen in the first tutorial, what you need, so here we are in my homepage template, which I already showed you, and I want to turn this one here into a proper development environment using a dev container. Now, the first thing I do here, I create a new folder, which I call .dev container. And remember, the extension here, dev containers, is installed. Now, as a first file inside of here, I want to create a Docker file. This Docker file we're going to use to build our container. And I won't go into the details of what Docker is, how it compares to, for example, virtual machines. There are many tutorials or videos about this topic out there. And I'll also link one in the description from another channel, which gives a very good overview why Docker is so great and why you should use it. Here we focus on how you can create a custom Docker file. And typically the first line inside a Docker file, you specify a base image. So which kind of system you want to base your Docker file or your Docker image on. In our case for web development, I want to base it on Ubuntu. And the command for that is the from command and then specifying Ubuntu and the version. Where do I get this from? This comes from the Docker registry. If you go to hub.docker.com, that's the main Docker registry, the one from which I'm pulling images, you can search for Ubuntu and here you'll find the repository and in it you find different versions and we're gonna take here 22.04 as our base image. So that's a blank Ubuntu image. If I were to save this and down here just run, let's go into the .dev container docker build minus t let's call it me bright web dev this will now create an image including ubuntu version 22.04 we can also check that it was created let's do docker images so here you see the new image and next let's just start the container docker container run we want to run it in interactive mode because otherwise it will just stop directly and we want to open the bash. And to see how quickly it started, and that's one of the powers of Docker, it starts much quicker than, for example, a virtual machine because it doesn't include all the kernel. It just uses the kernel of the subsystem, in this case, WSL. Now here inside of uh, this container, it's an empty Ubuntu. It doesn't have the tools we need for web development. For example, not even Git is present. So you see, it doesn't find the command. So what we now want to do, we want to extend here this Docker file to create us an image which includes all the commands, all the packages we need. And for it, we use first apt, the package manager. And what we can do now, for example, if you were to install something directly here inside of the Docker container using apt get update, apt get update, great minus y so we don't want to be bothered by it asking us apt get install minus y no install recommends so we don't want to install recommended packages and then git this will first update the listings for all the packages so getting it from the repositories then it will upgrade the existing packages and finally it will install git so this will take some time and once it's finished, we'll have Git available in our running container here. Now, the problem with that is it's just in this container. If you were to destroy this container and create another container from the image, Git would be gone again. So it's not part of the image. And that's the important thing. So first, what you can do if you build your dev container, you can enter the blank dev container in interactive mode like I just did and go through the motions of installing everything like you would on a real system. Use Google to figure out what you need, what are the correct commands and you basically test them here. But then let's first check here, git. 
So Git is now installed, but then you have to copy those commands up here into the Docker file. And you do this by invoking the run command. So with run, you add a new layer on top of whatever came before. In this case, we just have the blank Ubuntu. And when we do a run here and basically just do what we just did in the container. So doing all the update, upgrade, let's move to a new line here and install Git. Then next time we build the image and run a container from it, Git would be already installed. And this way you can build your container layer by layer. But what you should also do is not just install Git, you should also fix the version. That's a recommendation. And to figure out which version to use, so it's not just this version here, you can use apt show git. And this will tell you the version of the package. So you're looking for this here. Let's take this. And now we have fixed the version here, which is the recommended way of installing packages. Now let's just save the Docker file and also exit the container here. Now, when I exit it, it's also automatically stopped. So if we do a Docker PS, you see it's not running. Those are just my dev containers from my homepage. The reason is because there's nothing running now in Ubuntu anymore. So we started it in interactive mode with the bash active. Now the bash was closed, so the container also closes. Now, if we look here at Docker Hub and go to containers, we see up here, this was our container that was exited. We can also delete it now. And now let's repeat our build command for the image and notice what happens now. You see here the first part, it's cached. So it already pulled Ubuntu from the Docker registry. But here the second command, this run command, this is new and it now goes through the motions of installing Git. So first updating, upgrading and then installing. Basically what we did inside of the container. The difference is now it's part of building the image. So this will already baked into the image. Whenever we run a container from that image afterward, we will have already Git available. Now let's run the container again and now do git minus minus version and you see git is now installed directly. Now let's extend this run command and add some other packages and I'll just copy them over because otherwise it will take too long here. So I have a few others which I want to add here and I'm going with this backslash you can enter a new line. Let's just add a few more. Now we also want Python, pip, CR certificates and curl are required because in the next step we also want to install Node and we need curl for that. OpenSSH to be able to securely connect to Git. This way we already have a good foundation and I added everything in one run layer. So this means this is one layer. If I change anything here later, this run command will be performed again. And if I don't change anything, it's cached. So this is how those layers work. Now also what we want to install. First, let's exit and rebuild the image quickly. You see that now here, the first one again cached and the second one will be performed again completely because we made changes. Now this installation took a little bit longer, but let's again start the container. And this time we want to install other dependencies. Now you see here we have Python 3 and pip installed. So we can now use pip to install additional dependencies. And again, I'm just doing this here inside of the container to test to make sure that the installation runs through. And later I will basically transcribe what I've done up into the Docker file. So that's for me, it's a good approach. So let's do a pip 3 minus minus version first. See that it's installed and now do a pip 3 install no cache here, upgrade PyTest, which is a package I like for testing. Then let's get the black for Meta, PyLint and Pillow, because I use Pillow in my homepage template to resize images. Now let's just also check all the versions and get everything up into the Docker file. So let's do a clear pip freeze. So with the pip freeze, we basically see what's installed. And here we see the tools that we installed, pilot, pytest, pillow, and the black formatter. For this now, I'll add a new run command, a new layer, because this here was installing Ubuntu packages. Now we're installing Python dependencies. So now I can save. And next time I update the image, those tools will also be available. Next thing I need is Node. And for this, you typically do some Googling and find out that 
you should use NVM, a node version manager for it, which we're going to do. So there are a few commands. I not go through each command. So typically first you can again test it down here that the installation works and then you can create a new run command. So let's just do that because I don't want to now bore you going through each step. I mean, you know the principles now and I'll just add it here directly to the Docker file. Once node is installed, we also have NPM accessible. I use NPM to install the GARP CLI globally because this is what I need for my development. I talked about this in the first video. Now let's save it. And then what I also want to have part of this Docker file is Docker. So Docker inside Docker, kind of an inception, but it's just helpful to be able to run Docker commands from inside of your container. And you can also directly connect this Docker to the Docker of your host. So basically from inside your container, you can get information about containers running outside of it. And this will help later when we use Docker Compose to create a test server. So let me also add in those commands here for the installation of Docker. So I won't go through the different commands here. You can Google this, check what it does, but in the end, we'll have a Docker installation and final command, which I also took from Google is this one here. So here we extending the bash RC, which is used as startup script for our bash. And we change its look because we always want to see if we are in a Git repository, we want to see the current branch. And this is what this here does. And also don't worry, you don't need to now copy this from the screen. I have everything I show here, part of my open source homepage template. So you can just check this out and get either the Docker file or the complete repository. Now let's save this. Now also exit down here and rebuild the image. And this now will take a bit longer because we're now installing a lot more. If you've tested everything inside of the container already, you know that it will run through. And yeah, that's also the reason for such longer installations. It's always good to first test it in the container and then just transcribe the commands up into the Docker file. So now that our Docker file is finished, I also want to add a Docker Compose file up here. So let's create a new file. And I like to use Docker Compose, first of all, because it's a nice wrapper around the Docker CLI, which makes it easier to use more complex commands where you also want to mount directories, but it also allows you to quickly with just one command start several containers, which is one thing we wanted to do. So remember first video, I told you want a dev container and also a test container. So let's just write the docker compose file. So it's a YML file, a YAML file. First we specify the version and then there's the services section in which we add our service and we call it mepride web dev. And inside our service, we add a build directive because in this case, we want to build an image from the Docker file. So we specify the context, basically where the Docker file will be located and the Docker file. So instead of having build here, we could also directly pull an image from a Docker registry here. So instead of the build, we would have the image command and we'll do this later. But here we just want to create a service based on this Docker file. What we can also do, we can mount folders. So we use the volumes and what we want to do, we want to mount the root folder. So we go one step up using dot dot colon, and then we specify the target folder inside of the container home develop is what I call it. What we can also do, we can exclude a folder from this mount because here you see still the node modules are installed locally in my Windows system. I don't want this. So I can just specify home develop node modules here, which basically later excludes it from the mount. So if I'm inside of the container do an NPMI node modules will be present in the container, but they won't be here in this host file system. And with this, I'm done. You can now invoke the container docker compose up. This will now look at the docker file and also rebuild if there's anything that isn't cached. So you notice here that the image was built, the container was started, but it directly exited. Remember before we always started the container in interactive mode, directly logging into the bash 
And if the bash was ended, the only command running in the container, container stopped. So here we don't have any command running, which is why container directly exits. We can remedy this with the following. So we can add a command here to the service. And yeah, we just use a while loop that doesn't do anything, but it's basically a never ending command, which prevents the service from just stopping. So let's just save it and do docker compose up again. And this time you see we're still in the container. Now let's open another shell here, do a docker ps. So here we see our dev container. It's running for 13 seconds. Now we can also again get into its shell. So do a docker container exec minus it f3e. So I just use here the first part of the container ID and we want the bash. And yeah, again, we're in the bash. And also let's check if our mounting worked. So let's go to home, develop, do an LS. And here you see already all our stuff from the homepage template is mounted. Also, you see what we said. It sees uh, we're in the Git folder and we have the master branch checked out. So pretty nice so far. Let's exit again and also end Docker Compose. So just control C. Now we want to add a second service, the test service. So let's just add me bright web test. And here we're not using a Docker file. We're directly pulling an image and my homepage uses PHP. So I use the PHP Apache image. So I did a bit of Googling, checking the Docker registry to figure out which one I needed. And amongst the PHP packages, there is a version or a tag called Apache, which includes an Apache server. Here, I also want to do a volume mount. And what I want to mount is the dist folder, which contains my compiled homepage template. So let's just do that. And I want to mount it, or I must mount it to var www.html, which is the folder the Apache server serves. What I do here in addition, I need to also do a port mapping because otherwise I will not be able to access the Apache server from my host, from my browser. And I want to map the internal port, which is 80, to the external port 8080. So the external port comes first, the internal port second, and now I have the port forwarding active. Let's see what it does. Let's again bring up Docker Compose and it tells me here I have an error. It's not port, basically called ports. Let's save this, do it again. And now everything starts. Let's go to localhost 8080 and see here, this is basically the empty homepage template, which is served by the second container, by the Apache container. And with this, we've reached the end of part two of this tutorial series. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to bring everything together by adding a dev container configuration. And we're also going to upload our image to the Docker registry so we can use it for multiple development projects because we don't want to every time build a new Docker image. If we have our container, our dev container, it might work for several projects.